Hi, I'm Jeff Mertz, design editor at Wood Magazine. Today we're standing in the test garden that belongs to Better Homes and Gardens Magazine, where we built this pergola featured in issue 198 of Wood Magazine. One of the things about this project is it's a basic build because it can be built with just simply a circular saw and some other simple hand tools. Really what I want to talk about is the versatility of the circular saw. I want to go through some of the joints that you can make with it. Um, one of the joints featured in this project is a full notch of 2x4s. So let's go in the shop and let's go through the processes of using the circular saw to create joints for woodworking and for building this pergola. So first off I want to talk about just making clean square cuts. You can use what's often referred to as a rafter square. Um, any kind of any kind of square that's available is great. Um, I like this one because it I can line up the edge of it with the edge of my base plate with the blade. Once this is adjusted, I'll come and I'll find, get rid of any of the cracks or checks in the end of the board. This one's got a deep deep check. So I'll come down here. This is the end of my board where my cut's going to be. I line up this gauge stick with my cut line and make a cut. Another thing I want to talk about is the blade. You know, you don't need a fancy, very expensive blade for this. This is a $10 or $12 blade I picked up at the home center. 24 teeth framing blade, uh, carbide tipped, and it, uh, it, as you can see, it makes a good, nice, clean cut. So let's look at what other options we have when we're using a saw for joinery for projects around the house. Another good use for the circular saw is cutting notches. Um, a lot of times I'll want to put one board across another. Now I could cut them so that there's parts removed from both pieces so that they set flush or it may just be a notch in one board so that they just gives a registration point. So let's, uh, let's go about making a notch. Um, I've got again my cut ends are cut clean and we'll lay out a notch. So I'll lay out one edge and then I'll use a scrap. This is what I, one of the pieces I cut off the end um, and it's the exact same thickness as the material I'm using. So with my one side mark, then I can mark the other side, then use a square. Now I need to know how deep I need to cut. Um, this is construction grade lumber and uh, you know it should be three and a half inches square from edge to edge, but it might not be. It might be three and five eighths. Um, just depends on how dr wet or dry the lumber may be. Um, this does measure uh, three and a half inches, so, but what I'll do is I'll mark it at one and three quarter, which is half of our width of our board from both edges and in this case they both line up. If, they're, if they were offset I would just want to split the difference when I go to my next setup which is setting the depth of the blade. So I release the base release, pull my blade guard out of the way and I just rock the foot until the teeth are lined up with that those marks or if they were if they're apart just split the gap and lock it down give it another check and we're ready to make a cut to make things a little easier I'm also going to make both cuts at the same time. It gives me a wider stance for my saw to be. <clears throat> now, as we mentioned before, this little device lets me line it right up with my cut, but you know that's great for this one, but for this other cut, I'm just going to use my eye.
So I've made one shoulder cut, now I need to make the other. And once I have the two edges defined, then I'm gonna remove the waste in between by making a series of cuts, oh, about every quarter of an inch. Now we need to remove this material. I'm just gonna use a chisel that you can pick up at the home center. Um, and I just like to kind of put it in the middle of the joint and I just stick it in there and wiggle it back and forth once or twice. And that'll get most of the material out of the way. Then I need to clean it up. Now this doesn't have to be, um, you know, we're not building a piano. We're just uh, kind of cleaning up the cuts. So I can just come in here and just remove that material. And like I said, I'm just taking out the big pieces. So I've got my joint cleaned up. Now I want to test the fit. I just grab my scrap block, and I think that's going to work quite well. Um, the moisture content of this wood is pretty high. It came straight from the home center, and it's, gonna, it's pretty wet. Um, but the boards will shrink over time, uh, so you do want the joints to be tight so that they don't, if they start loose, they're going to end even looser. Um, so it's a little tight, but that's okay. A little persuasion. Apply some adhesive in that joint, put a screw through that joint and it's not gonna come apart. We've covered a, a notch. Now let's talk about a half lap, where we want two boards to come together to form a corner that are flush on the surface. Um, pretty much the same method that we used here, we're gonna again use a scrap material to lay out the width of the joint. If you don't have the scrap, use the boards themselves to lay out that width. So again, lay out our mark. Make sure that line is nice and crisp. Again, we're going to set the saw for half the thickness of the board. So three quarter from one face, three quarter from the other face, those line up. and let's make some cuts. Again, the first thing I want to do is make our shoulder cut. Now, like I did before, I'm going to make a series of cuts every about quarter of an inch till I get to the end of the board. But when I'm dealing with the end of a board where these could get fragile and want to fall away, I want to work from this end back towards the shoulder that I've established here. You'll see what I mean in a minute.
As I cut this way, I was always on stable material, but if I was cutting this direction, these parts get awful weak and it could provide an unstable surface for the saw. To clean up this material, I'm gonna use a hammer. Get rid of that debris. And again, grab my chisel. And like I said before, I'm not really trying to get it perfect. I just want to get rid of the big chunks so the joint will come together. Then check my fit. The next cut we're going to go over is a miter. Well, a lot of times you're putting a, say, a cap on a handrail. Um, I've got a couple things. Maybe my, the deck I built is, has a, is at an angle, um, or the material, again, isn't the same width. I can't just cut a 45 degree on the end of each one of those boards and expect it to line up, come together perfectly. So what I need to do is, is account for that. So start off by placing a spacer on one of my posts. I've just got three posts here like it's the corner of a deck. I set my, one of my rails up on top, centering it. And the corresponding board that I'm going to place the cut on, the other miter on. Now, this spacer just gets me up so that the boards are running flat so it's easier to do a layout mark. So if my outside corners are lined up flush, what I'll do is I'll just simply mark the inside corner. So draw my square up, place a mark, and mark my upper board. Okay, I know this one, these, I just kind of do a rough pencil layout of which direction the cut's going to be. And now let's lay out that mark. So I'm going to come out here to this corner and I'm going to go to this layout line. So I line up visually, I just sight down the edge of my square and then visually over to that mark. It's a little tricky because I've got a radius board, but if I'm sighting straight down to where this face inter, uh, comes across that layout line, I should get a, a good mark. Again, this whole time, I really don't care what the angle is. I've got to deal with the situation that I'm cutting, not necessarily worry about an exact 45. Now I've got a cut that follows the, pro the angle of my deck and my handrail miter is perfectly tight. Definitely in this situation I would want to apply some adhesive and drive a screw through the end. Here we've gone through the process of cutting miters, notches, and half laps using the simple tools that, we, that most homeowners have in their shop. A circular saw, a square, and a pencil. Using a setup gauge in these processes, you're guaranteed success. For more tips and techniques, come visit us at woodmagazine.com.